Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be doing A level math, the second part of this A level math um series. Today we're going to be finishing off the thirds and indices module and we'll be starting the quadratics at A level module. Okay, if you haven't watched the last episode of um this series uh, and you just are here for like you actually want to finish the series from start to beginning then i would recommend you watch the first series um episode but if you're here just to do a bit of quadratics and a test on um thirds and indices then this is exactly where you should be let's get started so if you remember from last episode we did um we uh, finished off on learning all of thirds and indices uh, at a level and we also covered a bit of the gcse um, for now, we're going to do three questions, but I will be starting a new program um, on my lap. I'm going to be coding a website where you can just ask, like you can get a quiz on this A-level series. This will come out soon, but if you're watching this right now, um, if you're watching this um, when it was released or any, like in the month, if in a few months after this was released, then you shouldn't expect it. Let's get started with the first question. Express the following in the form a plus b times the square root of c, where a, b, and c are integers. 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 subtract square root of 5. Now do this by yourself, but if you need any help, I will be explaining it. Okay, let's get started on explaining it. If you want to work it out, pause right now. Anyway, what you have to do first is rationalize the denominator. So to rationalize this, we just multiply, um, to rationalize the denominator, we usually just multiply by um, the same thing. But since this is 2 subtract square root of 5, then we have to do 2 plus square root. We have to multiply this by 2 plus square root of 5. Usually we'd be doing, um, usually we'd be doing just, if it was just square root of 5, then we'd just multiply by square root of 5. But since it's 2 subtract square root of 5, we do, we multiply by 2 subtract plus square root of 5. Anyway, when we do that, we get 4 subtract 5 over, now, um, at notes, now we have to do 3 plus square root of 5 multiplied by 2 plus square root of 5. When we do that, we get 6 plus 5 subtract no sorry not subtract plus um five times the um, square root of five times three which is three times square root of five and two times square root of five which is two times square root of five you add those together you get five times square root of five now four subtract five is just negative one and six plus five is eleven so you have eleven plus five times the square root of five now, if you want to divide by negative 1, you just make everything negative. So now it's negative 11 subtract 5 multiplied by the square root of 5. That's the answer. If you got that, well done. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, so let's begin question 2. If you would like to do this by yourself, um, just pause the video now. If you don't, let's get started with the solution. Oh, sorry. If you um, did this by yourself, um, Please find out if you were correct. Let's st get started. How can we make the square root of 50 simplified? You might be thinking just add them up, but you can't do that. You can't um, add square root of A plus square root of B. That wouldn't equal... That wouldn't work. So what you have to do instead is simplify square root of 50. Now, the square root of 50 is just 25 square root of 25 times 2 what's the square root of 25 it's 5 so now it's 5 multiplied by the square root of 2 and square root of 18 is just 9 times 2 and the um, square root of 9 times 2 and square root of 9 is 3 so it's 3 times square root of 2 and if you remember the third rule um is equal to um then we can just make it five plus three which becomes eight 
So this becomes 8 times the square root of 2. And we have 8 times the square root of 2. And if you remember, anything multi um if you it's not really I think I'm not sure if I explicitly mentioned this in the last one, but square root of two times square root of two is just two. So now it's eight times two. And that's sixteen. So the answer is sixteen. Okay. This is a slightly more difficult indices problem. We've moved on from certs. Find the exact value of x for 4x 4 to the x plus 1 multiplied by 8 to the 2x subtract 1 over the square root of 16 to the x is equal to 32. If you would like to find the answer by yourself, pause. Now I'm going to explain. Okay, so what you might think to do is multiply this and you'd get 32 to the and you just multiply that, but that wouldn't work. What you'd actually have to do is make the bases all the same. So what we do is we'd find that all of these can be somehow put to a root that would make two. For example, square um, if you put thirty-two to the fourth root, you get two, and all the rest also have some way of getting it to two. So for four, you just need to make it um. The square root which is 2 now we have 2 multiply 2 to the power of 2x plus 2 since we multiply this whole thing by 2 so we get 2x plus 2 multiplied by 2 and if you cube root 8 you get 2 so you multiply this by 3 6x subtract 3 over square root of 16x but don't forget that 16x can also be written as 2 to the 4x now don't forget you can say um square root as multiplied by one half to the power of one half and 2 to the power of one half multiplied by 4x is 2 to the power of 2x so now we have 2 to the power of 2x to finish this off we have to make 32 e um Two to the five. Okay, now let's finish this off. If you multiply, if you multiply by things that have the same bases, then you just add the indices. So we get two to the eight x subtract one over two to the two x. Don't forget, if you're dividing, you actually subtract the indices. So we get two to the six x subtract 1 is equal to 2, 2 to the 5. Now, what we can do next is we can set up another equation. Since we can just cancel these out, we get 6, oh, sorry, we get 6x subtract 1 equals 5. Now, this is simple, find out for yourself, but x is equal to 1. That's the answer to this whole problem. Let's begin the new module on inequalities. This will be two videos long. This it will start this video and will next video will finish it off. Inequalities is quite a big subject. SUDS and indices was mostly covered at GCSE and at A levels we only added a few rules. While at inequalities we have to we have a whole new world to conquer. This you might know a bit about, but GCSE didn't cover much about this. So let's begin. If we have negative 8x and it is greater than or equal, sorry, is less than or equal to negative 32, what would you do? Well, you might think just to divide both sides by negative 8, we get x is greater than or equal to 4, right? That's your answer. But wait a second. Would that make sense? For example, if x were 4, sorry, if x were, let's say, 3, then negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. But negative 24 is not greater than or equal to, um, is not less than or equal to negative 32. 
it's actually greater than. So that wouldn't work. The rule is when you divide any um any when you divide inequalities by negative numbers or multiply by negative numbers, what you have to remember is you have to swap the inequality sign around. Thus you would actually get x is greater than or equal to four. Because that's the only way that it'll work rationally, logically, if you think about it, um negative 8x, if it were 4, then it would be equal to yes. If it were 5, then it would be negative 40, which is greater than, which is, which is less than. Don't forget negative numbers. Um, for example, negative 32 is actually less than negative 40. You know, you learned this in, I think, year 6 or something. So, yeah. Okay, so let's get started on the next part of linear inequalities. So if we have um, an inequality, if we have a linear equation sandwiched between two integers, um, it's kind of like any other. Um, it's kind of like any other linear equation that you need to solve. Solve except with the addition of the new rule, which I taught you, that if you have multiplied by any negative number, then um, if you multiply by any negative number, then or divide or divide by any negative number then you swap around the um inequality sign but for this one we don't need that so all we need to do is add one to each side which would get us negative six three x and six and we can divide each one by three but since it's not negative three we just get two sorry negative two what Sorry, just x and 2. That's the answer to this first question. Now, this is something that you really need to know about um, about absolute value. So if you ever have the um, inequality and you have the absolute value of, I don't know, ax plus b or something like that, and it's less than, so in this example, it's ax plus the absolute value of ax plus b, is less than c then it's like a kind of sandwich as in which was the last time there was 3x subtract 1 this time it's negative c le is less than ax plus b which is less than c and if ax plus the absolute value of ax plus b is greater than c it's ax plus b is less than c or ax plus b is ax plus bx is actually um greater uh, is sorry it's less is um um less than negative c it works like this for any absolute value so don't forget if um if it's less than it's sandwich if it's greater than it's an or also, this works with a less than or greater than, for example, if it's this or this, you just have to change this to this or something like that. Yeah, just that's it. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you um, enjoyed and learnt a lot. Thank you. Please do subscribe as well. It really helps me. Thank you.